Hi, and welcome to this Aparma Community Edition tutorial. In this video, we'll show you how to work with Aparma from the command line in Linux. The core concepts are equally applicable in Windows too. We'll be defining events, creating a monitor, starting a correlator, and demonstrating some of the command line tools in action, such as injecting monitors, deleting them, and sending and receiving events. The demo itself is a simulation of a simple security system, which listens for security events and triggers an alert in some cases. Although we'll simulate the events for the purpose of this demo, in the real world, one could easily connect to an external source via the Connectivity Plugins API, for example. As we're using KDE as the window manager, we'll be using Kate as our editor, using Povray, which is actually an excellent ray tracing program, syntax highlighting, just for clarity, which works quite well. And of course, you can use whichever editor you're familiar with. We're hoping to provide syntax highlighters for popular editors on the community site soon. In Windows, you can also use the command prompt for development. We'd recommend just starting an Aparma command prompt, available from the start menu, which will correctly set up the environment. We're going to use a mixture of multiple terminal windows and the screen utility to switch between consoles. This will make our development process easier. In a Windows environment, we'd simply use multiple Aparma command prompts for each type of command. So let's create our application. We'll use our Aparma work directory, which we defined at install time as the base. Firstly, let's define some events that will feed into our application. It's good practice to keep these separate from the monitor files. In this case, we're going to create a motion event with no fields at all. We just want to detect motion and a pressure event that sends the mass of the object recorded whenever something puts pressure on a pressure sensor. Now let's save this event definition file. Next, we'll create a monitor, an integral part of our application. It will receive events and register event handlers, called listeners. We'll call it a sensible name, security, which will reflect in the file name. It should have a .mon extension. We'll declare a variable which we'll use as a threshold for comparison on pressure events further down. The onload method is the entry point and called when we load our monitor. So in here, we will set up some listeners, one for each event. For motion events, we're interested in all of them, so we simply create an on all listener for every event. With the pressure sensor listener, we want to check the contents of that event before deciding if an alarm should be raised. We could assign the event to a variable and check it in an if statement. However, it's also easy to check it directly, like so. So any pressure event whose integer field exceeds the threshold, in this case, greater than the weight of an average pet, will match and will raise an alarm. We'll leave this deliberate error in the file for now. Let's save the file and start running things. We'll use a terminal window to run our correlator. We'll need to source a Parma env to ensure that our environment is set up correctly. The correlator binary is in the same directory. As this is community edition, there is no license file required. So we'll just start the correlator. And there we go, it's up and running. So let's open up another terminal, which we'll use for our other actions. We'll run screen here so we can change between different jobs easily. The engine inject utility lets us inject our monitor file. So let's do so with a known error in it. And there we go. Here you'll see the error in the log message. Let's go to our editor screen and remove the error. Attempting to inject it this time in the engine inject screen will succeed. And you can go back and view the correlator log. If we attempt to re-inject a successful monitor, the correlator will complain about it already being injected. Now let's delete this monitor. We'll start a new screen for deleting, source of Palmer env, and then locate engine delete and give it the name of the monitor to delete. If we want to go back to the inject screen, you can use Control A and then N or P to navigate between the screens. And they're also allocated numerically from zero too. So Control A and then zero. We could make some alterations now to the code, but we're happy enough. So we'll go back and re-inject the monitor. Now let's look at how to send events into this project. Let's open up another terminal for sending events. When sending a Palmer format events into the correlator, we'll use engine send. In the great tradition of demos, here's one we made earlier, a file with some events in. 
we can see the event type, and then the values for each field would be listed within the parenthesis in the order they were declared. Now we can send in these events, like so. And cycling through to the correlator screen, you'll see the alarm triggered from these. OK, so finally, let's add a listener that will generate some random events every five seconds, alternating between each type of event and randomly changing the pressure value. We'll also emit events from the correlator. We'll open up another terminal to receive from these in a moment. We'll stop our application from running, re-inject and watch. We'll open up an engine receive as well now. And there we go. We're seeing the events we created ourselves triggering as the listener receives them. And our alarms in the correlator are triggering as well. So it's worth noting in a production environment, you wouldn't normally use these commands individually. You'd set up an ant script, which would do them all at one time. This is effectively what designer does. Okay, so that concludes our brief tour of working from a command line. Thanks for watching.